If you want to generate videos using WAN 2.1 locally in Comfy UI, then you've got a choice of three main methods. First is the Comfy UI native method. I've already covered this method for both text to video and image to video in previous tutorials, so if you're interested in this method, then you can take a look at those videos. The native method is the most straightforward and a solid all round choice. Second is the GGUF method, which uses a range of GGUF models from City96. This is the method that we'll cover in this video. The wider range of model sizes means that more incremental model choices are available for different GPU sizes and individual preferences. Third is the original method from Kijai, which is a solid method, but a little more involved. Different people have a preference for different methods, so depending on your specific needs, preferences, and hardware specs, you may prefer one over the others. You may even decide to use one method for text-to-video and another for image-to-video. If you're interested in a comparison of video generation results for all three methods, then drop a comment in the description below. In this video, we'll be focusing on the GGUF method for both text-to-video and image-to-video. We'll start off by taking a look at some actual generation examples and stats, then we'll step through the quick and easy installation process, and finally walk through the key settings in the workflows to get you up and running fast in generating your own videos. If you've already followed along to my WAN 2.1 native install videos, then the good news is that you have already installed most of the files, so this GGUF install will be super quick and easy for you. You'll only need to cover steps 2, 3, 7, 9, and 10. I'll be running through everything on a Windows PC using Comfy UI Desktop, running an 8GB NVIDIA GPU, 80GB of RAM, and an SSD. I'll leave all the links and references that I cover in this video in the description below for you. Let's start off by taking a quick look at some actual text-to-video examples that I generated on my machine that only has an 8GB GPU. For all of these generations, I use the very smallest 14B Q3KS GGUF text-to-video model to give you a baseline idea of the fastest generation speeds, but also the lowest quality you can expect. The likelihood is that you'll use one of the larger GGUF models, so you can expect a slight increase in generation time, but better quality. All these videos were at 16 frames per second, with a video length of 3 seconds or 49 frames and all at 30 steps. Maybe it's just me, but I had a hard time with these GGUF text-to-video generations and getting decent results in terms of the overall prompt following as well as the look and quality that I hoped for. I had to run numerous generations until I got something half-decent, which on only an 8GB GPU takes a painfully long time. Maybe I'm just bad at prompting and should use ChatGPT more. Personally, I much prefer image-to-video anyway. I can produce the exact high-quality image with flux that I want very quickly, feed it in as a solid guidance starting input image, and on a first generation get a decent final video result in terms of what I want and overall quality look and feel. There's just way less tweaking and time-sucking regenerations required for me. I'm not particularly impressed with any of these results to be honest, and these are the best ones after needing to regenerate each one four or five times even taking into account that they're using only the smallest Q3 model. Let's move on to some actual image-to-video examples that I generated on my machine, using the very smallest 14B 480p Q3KS GGUF image-to-video model. I used Flux FP8 to produce all of the input images, which were produced at the same dimensions as their video generations. I tend to get the best results when I match the input image and output video dimensions. All these videos were at 16 frames per second, with a video length of 3 seconds or 49 frames and all at 20 steps. Unlike the text-to-video examples we looked at previously, these examples are all first-generation results. For me, the results are very decent indeed, in terms of producing exactly what I prompted for and in terms of final quality. Obviously, there's a bit of a glitch in the first one with the goldfish swimming outside the boundary of the fishbowl head, but I left it there for you to see the real results, and not just a cherry-picked perfect selection. I hope these sets of examples have given you a better picture of what you can expect, using the very smallest and lowest quality WAN 2.1 GGUF models, in terms of quality and low VRAM generation times. The first step is to update Comfy UI. 
We'll need at least version 0.3.18 to run the WAN 2.1 models. If you're using the ComfyUI desktop version, then it will update automatically next time you launch it. For all other ComfyUI versions, you'll just need to go into your ComfyUI manager and update it manually from there. Okay, that's ComfyUI updated. On to the next step. The second step is to download the WAN 2.1 text-to-video GGUF models that we want to use. We'll open the City96 WAN 2.1 text-to-video Hugging Face page in our browser. Unlike with the native model choices, all the GGUF models are 14B models. There's no 1.3B models. The upside is that 14B allows for both 480p and 720p video generations. There's a whole range of different models available. From the smallest sized Q3 to the largest sized Q8. Depending on the size of your GPU, you can pick the size that best matches your VRAM amount. The smallest Q3 models will be the fastest, require the least amount of GPU VRAM, but will also be the lowest quality. Moving up the Q numbers will increase quality, but will be slightly slower. Since I only have an 8GB GPU, we'll download the very smallest 14B Q3KS GGUF model at 6.99GB in size, which is the default one that we use in the workflow. We'll click the download file icon to the right of it. We'll save the file in our Diffusion Models folder. Okay, that's the GGUF text-to-video models done. On to the next step. The third step is to download the WAN 2.1 image-to-video GGUF models that we want to use. We have a choice between 480p or 720p image-to-video models. The 480p models support 480p resolution, and the 720p models support 720p resolution. There are separate City96 Hugging Face pages to download either the 480p or 720p models. For our purposes, we'll stick with the 480p models. We'll open the City96 WAN 2.1 480p image to video Hugging Face page in our browser. As with the native model choices, all the GGUF image to video models are 14B models. Again, there's a whole range of different models available. We'll download the very smallest 14B 480p Q3KS GGUF model at 7.93 GB in size, which is the default one that we use in the workflow. We'll click the download file icon to the right of it. We'll save the file in our Diffusion Models folder. Okay, that's the GGUF image to video models done. On to the next step. The fourth step is to download the text encoders that we want to use. These are the same files that we used for the native method, so if you followed that method, you'll already have these and can skip over this step. We'll open the Comfy WAN 2.1 text encoders hugging face page in our browser. There's a choice between the larger and higher quality FP16 format and the standard FP8 scaled format. We'll download the smaller FP8 scaled text encoder at 6.74 GB in size, which is the default one that we use in the workflow. We'll click the download file icon to the right of it. We'll save the file in our text encoders folder. Okay, that's the text encoders done. On to the next step. The fifth step is to download the VAE. This is the same file that we used for the native method, so if you followed that method, you'll already have this and can skip over this step. We'll open the Comfy WAN 2.1 VAE Hugging Face page in our browser. There's only one VAE file. We'll click the download file icon to the right of it. We'll save the file in our VAE folder. Okay, that's the VAE done. On to the next step. The sixth step is to download the Clip Vision Image Encoder, which we need for our input image in the image to video workflow. This is the same file that we used for the native method, so if you followed that method, you'll already have this and can skip over this step. We'll open the Comfy WAN 2.1 Clip Vision Hugging Face page in our browser. There's only one Clip Vision file. We'll click the download file icon to the right of it. We'll save the file in our Clip Vision folder. Okay, that's the Clip Vision image encoder done. On to the next step. 
The seventh step is to download the WAN 2.1 GGUF workflows that will open and use in Comfy UI. There are separate text-to-video and image-to-video workflows, both of which have been simply amended from the native workflows. Let's download the GGUF text-to-video workflow first. We'll open the workflow page in our browser and scroll down a bit. We'll click the Download Workflow button. We'll save the file in our Workflows folder. Now let's download the GGUF image to video workflow. We'll open the workflow page in our browser and scroll down a bit. We'll click the Download Workflow button. Again, we'll save the file in our Workflows folder. OK, that's the GGUF workflows done. On to the next step. The eighth step is to install the Comfy UI Video Helper Suite custom node required to use the workflows so that we can save the output videos in a range of formats, including MP4. In Comfy UI, I will click Manager, then Custom Nodes Manager. We'll make sure we have the filter set to All. And in the search box, we'll type in Video Helper Suite. The Comfy UI Video Helper Suite custom node will be shown in the results. We'll just click Install. For version, we'll choose Latest, then click Select. The custom node will install. Then we just need to click Restart. To restart Comfy UI and apply the custom node. OK, that's the Video Helper custom node installed. On to the next step. The ninth step is to install the Comfy UI GGUF custom node, required to load the GGUF models. In Comfy UI, I will click Manager, then Custom Nodes Manager. We'll make sure we have the filter set to All. And in the search box, we'll type in Comfy UI GGUF. The Comfy UI GGUF custom node will be shown in the results. We'll just click Install. For version, we have no choice but to select nightly, so we'll click Select. The custom node will install. Then we just need to click Restart. To restart Comfy UI and apply the custom node. OK, that's the Comfy UI GGUF custom node installed. On to the next step. The tenth and final step is to take a look at the key settings for the GGUF text-to-video and image-to-video workflows that you'll want to know about to make adjustments for your own video generation needs. Both workflows are identical to their native workflow equivalents, except that they use the GGUF Unit Loader node from the ComfyUI GGUF custom node that we installed rather than the core native ComfyUI Unit Loader node. Let's start with the text-to-video workflow. We'll open the WAN 2.1 GGUF text-to-video workflow that we downloaded. Let's start with the Model Loading and Setup group. This is where we specify the files that we downloaded. The clip is the text encoder, the UNET is the GGUF model, and the VAE is the VAE file. Let's move on to the Prompt Encoding group. Both nodes are pretty much self-explanatory. Just override the default text with your own positive text prompt in the top node and your own negative prompt in the bottom one. Let's move on to the latent video creation group. For the 480p resolutions, 832 by 480 are optimal dimensions. For the 720p resolutions, you can move this up to 1280 by 720 pixels. For square aspect ratios, 512 by 512 for 480p and 768 by 768 for 720p. The default video length has been set at 33, which generates a 2-second video at 16 frames per second. The latent frame number cuts off a frame from the actual generated video, so when we calculate the number of frames for our desired video length, we'll need a higher latent frame number. Just multiply your video frame rate, which is set in the workflow at 16, by the number of seconds required. Enter this value in the length field, and it will automatically increase that number appropriately. Let's move on to the latent video generation group. The default settings are the most common and work well, but you can adjust these for your own specific needs. Let's move on to the final video combination and saving group. This is where we're using the Video Helper Suite custom node that we installed. 
The default settings are the most common and work well, but you can adjust these for your own specific needs. The frame rate that we set here will be the base number that we'll use to calculate the latent video length that we talked about previously. A frame rate using the default number of 16 will be fine for most purposes, but increasing this number, for example, to 24, will give smoother videos, but of course will take longer to generate. The default video format of MP4 has been set, but you can select from any of the many formats available. Okay, that's the key settings for the GGUF text-to-video workflow done. Let's move on to the GGUF image-to-video workflow. We'll open the WAN 2.1 GGUF image-to-video workflow that we downloaded. I'll only cover the settings that are different to the ones in the text-to-video workflow, so I don't waste your time. Let's start with the model loading and setup group. Make sure you select the GGUF image-to-video model that you want to use. Next, we have the input image loading group. Just click the choose file to upload button and then select the image to be used. For best results, I always find that I get better results when the image dimensions are the same as the video dimensions that I want to generate. All other settings are the same as for the text to video workflow that we just ran through. Okay, and that's the key settings for both GGUF workflows done and everything covered for this one 2.1 GGUF tutorial. Hope you found this video helpful, and I'll catch you in the next one.